Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pad, and in today's video, we're gonna explain how to use the defaults and the options that are in the ProtoTrack RMX. Now to get started, I'm here in the DRO screen, but as I've shown you in some of the previous uh, videos, over on the left side in the information panel, you'll see that we have a button that's called defaults. Okay, now we've changed this a little bit from the first video we did, so I want you to pay a little bit uh, closer attention. But when I open the defaults page, basically what this is for is to set up the machine for the way that you like to do things. For instance, if you always wanna leave a finish cut of 10 thousandths, you can put that in your defaults and it'll auto fill when you program. Um, everything from whether you wanna do number of passes to depth of cut to uh, surface footage compared to RPM, everything like that is in here and we're gonna go through that in a minute. But we've added a new feature which is really great now and you'll see it right up at the top here where it says default user. So that's the way the machine comes standard and these are all the default standard from the factory. We did add the ability to put different default users in here now so that you could either set it up like Pat has one and Jim has one and Greg has one and they can set it up for how they want their defaults to be. Or better yet, you could set it up, hey, here's a default for when I run stainless. Here's one for when I run aluminum. Here's one for when I run copper. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways and you can have quite a few of them in there. So I wanna start out first of all by showing you how to do that. So you'll notice that right under where it says default user, it says use service code 660 to create or to change a default profile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this window right now, I'm gonna go to setup mode, and in here I'm gonna go to service code 600. And you'll see in here that the default user is the only one on the page. And so if I wanna add a default, all I have to do is push add a profile. And then it'll ask me what that's going to be. I can open my keyboard or use a keyboard that's plugged in. I'm just gonna use my name for this one and keep it really simple, all right? See it right there, hit the set key, either here on the keyboard and then close the keyboard. So there is my profile right there under my name. So you can all see it, I highlighted it right there, okay? So I'm gonna push return and I'm gonna go back to that defaults page. And now when I hit the drop down menu up here, you'll see that my name is one of the ones that I can choose. So now I'm gonna walk through and just explain what the defaults are so you have a better idea. So starting at the top, right now it's set up the standard way, so it's set in feed per minute, but you can see there's a drop down menu where I can change that to um, thousands per tooth. Okay, um, it's set at RPM, but I can change that to surface footage. I've got my different drilling pec types. Right now it's on variable, but in case you guys didn't know, you can change it to fixed or chip break. All right, I'm gonna leave it at variable. Um, in my profile pockets and island events, it's saying what is your number of passes you wanna have. So if I generally am cutting, I'm probably gonna change that by how deep I go, but just for a default, I'm gonna leave it at one. It has depth of pass if I decide to run depth of pass instead of number of passes as my roughs being 250 each, okay? Um, number of depths and passes here um, is also uh, set for depth of pass. Uh, number of rest passes, which is for the final machining part, I have it set at two instead of one. And then I have that cut in half also at uh, one eighth of an inch per pass. As I scroll through here a little farther, you're gonna see that I have a place for a finish cut. So if I always use a finish cut, like I said, of 10 thousandths, that's automatically gonna come up in my program when I'm programming, okay? Next thing it's asking for is my step overs for my different types of roughing in my pockets. So here it's saying use 70% of the cutter when I'm using my standard tool pass, such as um, offset or parallel. And then if I'm using adaptive machining, it has it at 35, and you can adjust either one of them to what your preference is. Uh, I'm gonna leave those where they're at. In a face mill event, it's gonna use 95% of the tool to step over, and I can change my cutting method if I want to. It's set at zigzag right now, but I like to set it at one way so that when it's throwing chips, they're throwing away from me instead of at me. So I'm gonna leave it at one way. And then if I wanna use a Z finish cut, I'm usually only gonna have that at about 5,000. So I would fill it in like so. Uh, my number of passes for depth of pass here is talking about um, my face mill itself, okay? So I've got it at depth of pass, which is fine. Most of the time you're not face milling very much anyway, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, in my pocket and island events, I've got my cutting direction set for counterclockwise, which means that I'm always gonna climb mill the final parts of it. Um, my Z entry mode is set at plunge, which is straight from the factory. And uh, it's also set at offset, which is straight from the factory, okay? 
Uh, my method of cutting in my pockets uh, to enter is at zigzag. And then my finish cut, I want to set that also at 10 thousandths. Okay, and let me correct myself a little. My cutting method for zigzag means that when I'm uh, machining in adaptive, it's going to move both directions instead of one direction, pick up, and go back the other. So if I change that to one direction, that's what would happen. I also have the option now that when I make a pocket that requires two tools and I want to put a finish cut in the floor, I can tell it whether to use both tools to finish the floor or just use the finishing tool to do the entire floor. I like using the finishing tool for the entire floor, so I'm going to leave that where it is. I have the ability to adjust um, the helical entry on how many, uh, how many thousandths it is per revolution. I have the ability to change the angle of my zigzag entry. Right now it's set at 3 degrees. I can go anywhere from 1 to 11. Um, my machining angle is set at 90 degrees, which is standard. But now if I'm doing a pocket that is taller than it is wide, I could change that to 90 and then it would machine up and down instead of back and forth, okay? I could also set it at an odd number like 30 or 45 degrees. When I'm doing a pocket that has certain places where uh, the roughing tool cannot fit, it's what we call different regions in a pocket. And we have the option of how we want to rough it out. So I can either set it at regions or at depth. What that means is if I've got four different segments in a pocket, or four different regions as they call it, I can tell it if I've got three cuts to get to the final dimension to do each one in the first cut, then the second cut, then the third cut, that would be going by depth. Or I could set it in regions, which means it's gonna do all three here, then all three here, and then all three over there. Um, my roughing link is set up standard at two inches, which means how far it raises out of the pocket when it has to rapid. If it's less than two inches, it's gonna raise 20 thousandths. If it's more than two inches, it's going to come all the way up to Z-Rapid or Z-Safety if you're using a Z-Safety. Same thing is true um, for my, uh, my bottom finish if I'm doing that in link lengths. I can control how tight of a radius it cuts when I'm doing adaptive machining. The standard is set at 40 thousandths, which is generally good enough. Um, my rough cut tolerances are set from the factory at 5 thousandths when I'm using a finish cut. It's set at 2 tenths when I'm not using a finish cut and my rest cut tolerance is set at two thousandths of an inch. Generally, you should never have to really change those. And then uh, circle pockets, I have uh, my toolpath pattern set in here as offset, but we did recently add a new one, so now we can do spiral, which is much more like the older prototracks do, and I like that a little better. Um, engraving, I have a lot of different ways that I can engrave, but one of the things that they changed now that's really nice is it used to always be that the lower left-hand corner was your zero, and now I can change that to the center, which is easier to calculate uh, putting your engraving in the middle of a certain place. Um, my subroutine events are set up that I'm going to use 100% when I'm doing a sub of whatever the original was. I like to leave that where it is. I would generally have my mirror imaging to run backwards so both parts are either conventional or both parts are um, climb milled. Sorry about that. Uh, my multiple fixtures, if I'm using them, I have it set at using two. And then my reference position, this would be my home positions and my um, and where I want to have my soft limits, right? And then whether or not I want to have them turned on. Here's my home position right here if I want it to tool change somewhere other than zero, zero. I have it set that when it boots up, it's in inches, but you could change that to metric. And then I also have it booting up in three axis, but I could change that to two. Uh, my maximum feed rates, it's set at 150 inches per minute, but if you have electronic hand wheels, that can be as fast as 400 inches per minute. I have it set here as my coolant. I'm going to change that to using mist because that's what I have on this machine. Cutter compensation is set to tool left or climb milling. And then when I'm doing parasolids, I have the ability to set what I want my offsets to be in here. My Z-Rapid is set at 100 thousandths. I would probably put that at 50. And then I've got 30 thousandths for my through depths for both drilling and milling. And last but not least, my actual Z Rapid for anything else other than Parasolid, I also would set at 50. I like to keep it a little closer to the part. So as you can see from that, that's how you can change whatever it is to make it suit the type of machining you're going to be doing at the time. And then you could just open another one if you want to change it for a different type of a material or a different default user. Okay, when I'm done, I'm just going to close that. And then what I want to show you is what actually happens in the program mode. 
So when I go to the program mode, you'll see that I have three rectangular pockets in here. All three of them were programmed from the defaults. So they're all set up exactly the same way. But what I want to show you is the way the options work. So first of all, here's the first pocket that's highlighted and you'll see this options button is lit. When I select options, you'll see that these are the things I can change for this event. They're only going to apply to event number one. Next time I make a new event, it's going back to my defaults, okay? So in here you can see I can add a Z safety plane, right? I could change from RPM to surface footage, things like that. I can change from depth of pass to number of passes, okay? Maybe I'll do that so you see what happens. And I'm gonna change that part also. You can see then that I can add event comments to this, which will show up in this event. I can add a Z bottom finishing cut. Um, I can change the entry from plunge to helical or zigzag. I can change the tool path from offset to parallel or adaptive. And then I can change my step overs, whether I'm cutting in regions or in depths, and then what my rough tolerances are and, uh, and my rest tolerances and things. So in this first event, the only thing I really changed is that I added a Z safety plane. So let's say I wanted to move up a half an inch before it goes to the next pocket possibly to clear a clamp or something that's in the way. And because I changed it to number of passes, now I'm gonna tell it, hey, I wanna do that in three passes and it's automatically gonna calculate that. And then in my rest passes, I'm gonna change that to four just to make sure I got enough for the size of the tool that's gonna to clean up the corners, okay? Now, when I swipe forward and I go to the second pocket, again, this one's back to the defaults the way I set it up originally, but I'm gonna make a couple other changes in here. I'm gonna change from a plunge to a helix to get in here, and then I'm gonna change this to adaptive machining, right, which means it's gonna use the 35% step over. And then when I do that, that's probably gonna allow me to boost up the RPM of this a whole lot. Whoops, that's too much. And then let's run that at 80 and 70 right here and then I'm also going to be able to come in here and change this from my depth of pass being at 250 I'm going to go to the full pass so that it does it in one pass right there and that's going to allow that pocket to work a lot faster and then last but not least if I go into uh, whoops which is the one I missed this one right here uh, let me see yes that's the one I missed so if I go into options here this one's also I'm going to change and I'm going to go in here and uh, change this to zigzag and then I'm gonna change this to parallel, okay? And when I close that, it's not really gonna change any in here, but you're gonna see the difference in the tool paths. So the next thing I would do is I would add my tool table, which I've already done in advance, but you can see that all three of them, I'm using a half inch tool to rough and a 3 8 to finish. So when I go into the setup mode here, and then I want to hit return to go to my tool paths and let it calculate my tool paths. And as you can see, I've got three different tool paths for my three pockets showing me this is, of course, the offset. This is your parallel, which is all the older prototracks have. And then there is my pocket using adaptive machining. So this will give you a lot better idea how much better control you have using your defaults and your options for each individual event. And again, at any time, if you wanted to change one back from the way it was, you would simply go back to uh, the setup mode here and go to service code 600 highlight the one that you want to change, and then say reset that profile. And when I say yes, now it's right back where I started and I could make adjustments again just like that. I'm hoping that this will be beneficial for you to have a better understanding on how defaults and options work. As always, we're always continuing to make bigger and better things in this control. So it might be down the line we add something else to this. And if we do, I'll update the video at that time. But until then, if you got questions, feel free to reach out to me. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching and keep on tracking.